Welcome to Ace Designs 107, I'm Yes and the Car Pack, you are the kings and queens. Today I have a Photoshop tutorial showing you how you can make your own unique 2D Twitter banner. And, but keep that in mind, you would be able to make this into a YouTube banner, I'm just using it with Twitter dimensions I guess. The difficulty for this tutorial will be 2 out of 5 stars because I'm going to be going into this it really in depth like when I mean in depth I'm talking about every shortcut every button I press it's gonna be easy for all those noobs out there with Photoshop and that's why I'm gonna be breaking this into separate parts because I don't want massive long videos because of that'll make people bored if I make it short and snappy 20 minute videos hopefully you'll come back viewing them that's the idea boys the duration will be around 20 minutes for this one and hopefully you get to learn some new things I say that a lot in this tutorial let's get into it welcome to the desktop this is where the magic happens we're going to get straight into this tutorial by opening up photoshop but before i do start i just need to say a couple of things so the banner was created by this guy called finch he does really cool banner designs they're not extremely hard like his skills aren't amazing this guy is absolutely hilarious um, yeah, so his skills aren't like incredible incredible, but he's a pretty good designer I'll give him that and I use a lot of his um, banners for my tutorials and One thing that I do want to say is this tutorial will be split into a couple of parts. I didn't say it in the intro um, I did say it in the intro, but I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail So if you want to skip to the tutorial go right ahead Okay, so basically to get the gist of this this is a detailed banner and I want to create high quality content for these guys not just releasing videos that are two to five minutes I want to release videos that take time and effort into editing so you can see that I really Take this YouTube thing to the next level for my channel So um, there's a lot of little different details in here especially with the line work the gradients and everything like this And I really want to make this a really cool little series or mini series for this banner so let's see if we can get to 25 likes and I'll be releasing the next part tomorrow However, I still think that I'll release all the parts but do let do um right like the system So like the video so I can see that you enjoy me making these really detailed videos Because of I'm going to be going into the line work for this um yellow bit into this tutorial And yeah, so we're gonna get straight into this by going to file new and I'm even gonna be showing you all the different um, little file stuff and everything like that So yeah, hopefully you learn a couple of things along the way and Yeah, so let's go to file new. We're gonna make a Twitter header for this one Not a YouTube banner. Um, just because of Twitter, you know gets to capture the greatness in this header and For Twitter, I've had a couple of comments about saying hey, you should probably try this setup instead of this one or that but what I do like to use is 3,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels um, That's just what I prefer to use as a designer. So That's what I'll use in the end. So I'm gonna be doing 3,000 by 1,000 This gives me plenty of room to play around with however because I'm gonna have a preview on to this one I'm going to do the height 2,000 so I can have a thousand pixel room for a preview so if I'm just gonna press Control R and drag this one down and I'll drag this onto here actually before I do that I'm going to just crop this because I just want the header so I can use it as reference while I'm going through the tutorial a lot of you guys know if you watch my videos before that I do this and yeah and if you aren't already subscribed you should because I release daily up content and it's not just shitty content Okay, so just drag this one onto here. And I'm going to be going through all the little different shortcuts that I'm using to, from time to time and everything like this because of I want to make this a uh, really special tutorial. So let's go to view clear guides and I'll just cut this little black mark out of here. Bam. Okay, so I'm just going to name this a preview layer preview. And I'm also going to lock the layer because I, I don't need to move this. So when I lock a layer and I press move tool, it won't allow me to move it. 
Okay, great. So now I'm going to make a new layer in between here. I'm going to go to File, Open, and open up the picture that I'll be using today. And funny enough, this is a Tomb Raider picture. I knew this picture before, so I knew, knew how to do this tutorial, which is really interesting. And that isn't that. So I think it's up into here. Okay, there it is. I'm just going to save this one there. Isn't the highest quality, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, and just drag this picture onto your header. And I'm gonna press Control T, hold Alt and Shift, and drag this one out so you can resize it as it can be seen. And we don't need her head much. I'm just going to do the same size like he did. I'll try to get her head. Okay, like that. And he drag this one out of it. Like that. Okay, sweet. So when I um, have my rulers, what um, what I do to get the rulers is just press Control R, and I can use this so I can see how my tree is and I can adjust it accordingly. So I have a really accurate representation of this, so it's just like a mirror. That's what I like to do with all my designs. Um, just try to create something very, very true to the original design. And with my preview, I'm gonna unlock this quickly and just make sure that that's correct. Okay, sweet. So the next thing that I'm going to do is add in um, this little um, like a yellow box that we have going in because I need to start editing that but before I do that as I'm saying this I'm making this when I go um, I'll do this with a lot of my tutorials I'm going to select this bear so I either I'm going to use the magic wand tool which won't work because there's too much detail so I'll use a quick selection tool and I just make a selection around here in my previous tutorials, I have gone through how to use this, but really it's really simple. You can see that I'm just brushing in with probably a size 15 and just using the plus brush and just selecting just the bear itself. And I'm going to try and just aim to get all this, even though I don't need to, I just need to get like half the bear, but I'll just get the bear what I can. Okay, like that. And then I will actually just take some stuff because I really don't need that much. Something like that should be good. And just using the eraser. Okay, so it's a really rough sketch, but it is getting all the little things like that. And I might just try to get the little sticks in there and can take away some of that stuff some of the nasty stuff and i might also try to get this little fur okay perfect i have a timer on so i don't go over 20 minutes because that's what i want to that's a good time where people kind of get an idea of what the tutorial series is going to be about Okay, sweet. So now I've got my selection. I really want to make sure. And then I press Control C, press Control V. So I've just got a copy of that band. It's in the exact same location. So now when I go to the blending options, this is just an example. I'll go into the details later on. And then I do inner glow. You can see that I have options for the inner glow. Let's just say like a yellow. And then I start applying all the little styles like that. And it's going to work like that, really simple. And don't worry that it's like not accurate because I'll just show you, I'll just give you an example right now so I can just prove a point here. So once you right click and do Rasterize Lay Style, brag, um, just bring that up and cut that. See, it's only going to use that side as it, so yeah. So the next thing that I'm going to do is make this yellow tint. So to do that, I'm just going to be using my rule as a guideline and I'll use this as an exact same scale. 
a lot of you might not like that I'm doing this with like the exact um, banner, but I just want to like just replicate it because of I don't know. I just feel like it. So I'm going to be using the rectangular marquee tool. Press M on your keyboard if you want to use it, and then just click and make a square like that. And we're just going to fill this one in with like a bright yellowish, something like that. So F F D eight zero zero, not fluoro yellow, but still yellow. And then if we go to the opacity, you can see that it starts to edit it. And if you also go to overlay, you can see the different effects that it has. So Okay, so the setting that I like to use is color because if I can see that the texture is very similar to this one But we're going to do some um, little tweaks to this one just to get the same color So first of all the bear needs to be a separate color in itself So if I control click this bear and make sure that this layer is selected I control click the thumbnail of the layer and press delete That's not going to affect the bear anymore and if I also bring up my eraser tool by pressing E on my keyboard, the size is probably going to be around 500 and the hardness is going to be zero. And then I start painting in, I can select like where is it going to do. I might also bump this up to like 800 something. So I can start to select where I want this to actually select it. I just want it to be kind of abstract around this stuff. Something like that. And I'll also use an abstract brush pack. Now you can find these on Google, um, yeah they're great, like that. Make sure that you erase it to a selecting it. And I'm just going to click a bunch of times. Uh, this is not an appropriate brush. Um, actually I've got a solution, make a new layer. Wrap up your brush tool and use an abstract. And just make sure that you're painting with a white foreground color. Okay. And we're just going to change this opacity right down to something like that. So it's like, it looks like it's taken out of it. Something, sorry, this is the closest. Obviously this like isn't gonna be 100% on. I don't want you to think of that like this, but it's gonna be, I'm gonna try and like get it pretty accurate. See, so we're adding in those little brushes and little details and it's really making all the little difference. And if we bring up our bear and just delete the other side so it's not going over the bear, we can see that it's getting something like this, which is really cool already. Okay, so the next thing, I'm just going to press Control u on this yellow and just make sure that it's a color that I really do like. Mess around with the saturation and also the lightness. Now, if you're using the same color codes, make sure that you transfer these colors through. Sorry, I went a bit quiet there. Just a bit concentrating. I think I think that one uh, needs it looks a bit too green. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe the lightness could use a little bit of an adjustment. Ah, it's hard, bro. It's hard. It's like, it's really hard to make the, um, like, the decision via your foreground. I could just do it like a totally different color, but I won't. Because you can apply CC on this anytime you'd like. I guess something like that's okay. Why don't we do it like that? No problem. Okay, so with the bear, I'm going to be doing something totally different. So I'm going to make a new layer above it. I'm going to be using my Marque tool again by pressing M to select it. And for the foreground color, it's going to be something like an orange like that. So FD681C. And just fill this one in. So yes, it's going to look odd for the moment. But just fill it in. And then we are just going to change this one to color. 
So again, it's going to have something like this. But when we start to apply little layer styles on this and start up, um, messing around with all the little different settings, it should work out. I'll just try all the other layer styles because why not? Overlay's not bad. These are all horrible. It really comes down to overlay or color. Overlay, color. I think colors more, it just brings out the blacks more. Okay, sweet. So now with our bear, all we have to do is to um, go to the layer styles and start to make an inner glow. And with this one, we are going to do it an orange or a yellow. And it's not shining through. Let's just try it. Okay, it is there. Okay, so we might need to merge this one together. Just let me try something. Control click this, control shift I, select this layer, press delete. And then merge these two gaze layers together. And then if I um, also just right click, go to blending options, go to inner glow, and then we get this thing. And yeah, so we can start editing it. So with the opacity, I'm going to do probably something like 72. The size is going to be something prominent, like 114, 115. And blending option, we're going to try all these different little options. I usually don't. Linear dodge looks good. Okay, I'm also going to make an outer glow. And this one is going to be yellow. Normal. Something like that. I might do it like a dark orange. Like a really light yellow. Yeah, light yellow. And obviously you can pause the video and see the final settings that I end up using. Something like that. And these are all little blurs. I'm gonna be showing you how you can do that also and all these little different lighting stuff. Okay, this inner glow needs to be chopped down a couple of levels. Okay, sweet. So now I'm going to right click on this layer and do rasterize layer style. But before I do, I'm going to make it back up by pressing control J. This will allow me to do any errors, um, error changing that I can do. Rasterize layer style. And then finally we have our final. I'll also hide this one and just press control J, control G on it. So, and I'm also going to name this group backup layers. This just um, will give me like an insurance you say, and it's useful. Layers, because if I'm going to have multiple. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do is bring up my marquee tool again by pressing M on my keyboard and just delete that side, because we don't need it. Okay, so we need to start to um, glushing blur this. So I'm going to press Control J on this layer, go to filter, blur, Blushing blur and I'm probably gonna do a size of 3.2 and bring up your eraser tool and just do a circle with something like I guess 600 and the hardness is going to be zero and just take away some of it so you still have those edges but they're just really blurred out I guess you could say and I erased a bit too much okay sweet I might change down my size to like 300 just so I can get in there accurately and really select the areas that I would do want to be um, clear and not to be clear. Okay, so I've got something like that. And if I press Control E, they'll merge those together. If I press Control J again, right click on this filter, go to sharpen, sharpen edges. This is just an experiment. Press Control F a bunch of times. They'll bring out the fur more. So you can see that this one's really like strong. So hopefully that will bring out the fur for this one. I'm also gonna press Control L for the levels and just mess around with the levels. I wanna try to bring out the blacks in the shadows. 
make it more saturated. And speaking of that, I can go to the image adjustments, saturation, contrast, I mean, and bring down the contrast, bring down the brightness and bring up the contrast. So again, it's just getting something like this. And I can also go to the blending options again and apply another inner overlay um, in a glow just with an opacity, something like that. And maybe this one can be like an orange. Okay, sweet. I also don't need an inner glow on this side, so I'm gonna right click, do rasterize layer. And it should be fine. So the next thing is to finish up this tutorial and I'll get back to you guys with another video later on tomorrow so hopefully you learned something we're going to be going into um how to do the rest of this side i'm also going to be doing these brushes i've made a tutorial on how to make your own custom brushes but i will be going through it in this tutorial because if i don't want to redirect i just want to do this all in one tutorial so yeah guys hope you enjoyed it hopefully that you learned something because if i've went through some techniques that i haven't gone through before so yeah, I might just adjust this adjustments like that. Yeah, that's looking good. Anyway, hopefully you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.